All right, guys, so it's been about two years since the uh, Insta360 Go 2 came out. Great little camera, very versatile, very useful for, especially for point of view shooting. And now we have the Go 3 here, a uh, very similar form factor, but totally different concept here with a screen on the back here as a very uh, asked for feature. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's talk about all the specs and features and what has changed with the new Go 3. All right, so here it finally is. It's been more than two years since the Go 2 came out. And as you can see here, a sort of a traditional camera, action camera body. Uh, and you have the, you know, sort of the Go 2 style, the little tiny uh, action camera inside this, what's called the action pod. And we have a screen here on the back. It's a 2.2 inch uh, OLED display, I believe. And it flips up. So this is, a pretty nice feature, especially for those of you that do a lot of vlogging. So this makes it a, a very versatile camera, uh, obviously very useful. And of course the actual camera here will pop out and press the little button on the side here. And you can stick the camera out, pull the camera out like this. And you can see it's got those little pins that connect the uh, main camera to the uh, action pod. And the uh, main camera here is waterproof now to five meters so it's a little bit it goes a little bit deeper than uh, the go to i think the go to is four meters so this is fully waterproof uh, without a dive case up to that depth um, they don't have the uh, dive case for the go three yet it should be out pretty soon as long uh, as well as the other accessories should be coming very soon after launch now um, the action pod here is not waterproof it is splash resistant or water resistant so i think it's like um ipx4 rated so and it's only that with that rating with the camera installed in the action pod so that the electronics are a little bit more protected so uh, if you're worried about this in the rain it should be fine uh, in terms of splashes but i would not take the whole unit and dunk it in the ocean that would not be a good idea Okay, so before I get into all of the features of the camera specs and what it can do, what's different about this versus the original, uh, I guess the or the second generation go to, let me first show you what comes in the box. So you get uh, the a new pendant here. So this is the thing. A pendant mount is the one that goes on your neck, and the camera does attach to this magnetically. So the same features of the go to in terms of the magnet all work as well and you want to put this inside your shirt and then you can stick this on top and then they have this new little accessory that's included it's a little angle adapter so you can adjust your angle like so you get a hat clip mount here and the camera goes in here and you can put this on you can clip this onto like a hat or any sort of you know, uh, surface or some sort of flat surface that you can clip this onto and then this thing pivots so you can adjust your angle. And this is pretty useful for, again, uh, you know, mostly for point of view shooting, uh, hands-free of course. So you put this in your hat or clip it on something and then adjust your angle and then you can uh, go about um, filming whatever you're doing hands-free. And this is a really good way of getting that sort of footage. And now we have this new pivot mount and Basically, the pivot mount is you can have this little mount at multiple different angles at such. And uh, this has a little base here. And this little plastic piece comes off. And you can see this little sticky piece here. It basically allows you to attach it to flat surfaces. Uh, and, and it will hold pretty well. Um, and this is also um, washable and reusable. So if you put on some surfaces, after a while, collect some like little pieces of dust and dirt. Just uh, take, put this on, to, uh, rinse it under some water, and you can basically reset it and, and, and reuse it for other things. And then the little base here does pop off. There's a little quarter twenty mount here, tripod mount that you can attach it to other accessories. I'll show you that here in a second. But what you can do with this is you, this will actually hold the camera itself. So what's new about the Go Three is there ha there's little clip mounts on the top and bottom here and you can attach the camera to the mount like this and it's a little crooked there you go and then you can you know mount this to wherever you want and 
you used to, can use different angles to get the exact angle that you're looking for to capture the footage that you're trying to get. And this is not going to come off because it's locked in the place of these little clips. So you're going to have to press these buttons here to release the camera. And it can also mount the main camera itself or the action pod. So it, it only goes a certain way, like, like so. And you can see it's locked in. It's, it's, it, it is attached magnetically, but then the clips here do, do hold it in and it is not going anywhere. So you can also mount the full action pod camera combination here on this little pivot mount as well. A couple of extra accessories they did send along that are not included. There's this monkey tail mount here. And this is pretty nice because there's a little uh, tripod quarter 20 uh, mount here on one side and also the reverse on the other. And you can wrap this around pretty much anything. It's very flexible. So in this little case here, I'm actually sort of make, turning this into a little bit of a tripod here. And then uh, I take the pivot mount here, remove the base, and you can stick this on top of here. And then you can actually use this as a tripod and then attach the camera that way. I can use a tripod like this, or you can basically wrap the monkey tail to pretty much anything. Uh, in this case, I'm showing you examples here on a scooter. So you can get some pretty unique angles that you can't otherwise get. So it's a pretty uh, versatile uh, little accessory. They also sent me this uh, quick release mount as well, as you can see here, uh, a quarter 20 threaded uh, mount here on the bottom for a tripod. You have these little finger mounts that uh, fold down. These are sort of GoPro style mounts here and they just sort of flip up magnetically like this. But you can pull this down and then attach this to GoPro style mounts with these little finger mounts here. And then of course the top is magnetic and it works the same way. Um, the camera attaches as such. And this one you do have to press down make sure that the clip is locked into place because there are these little rubber, um, I guess, spacers here that apply force between the um, mount here and the camera. And that makes it make sure that it doesn't uh, rattle around or anything like that. But you want to make sure that that's locked into place because while it is magnetic, if it's not locked into place like this, it could potentially fall out. So you want to make sure that's clipped into place like so, and then it's not going to come out. And this is a pretty useful mount. So for example, um, I have this uh, little, uh, this is a third party tripod. You can screw things, screw into the tripod mount like such, put the camera on top of here. And then this is a little selfie stick and you have a little tripod or a little feet here and you can put this down on the table. So this is a pretty useful um, accessory as well because you can attach to other little mini tripods. I, th I believe uh, Insta360 will have their own version of this sort of mini tripod that you can get, but it wasn't available at the time of the recording of this video. All right, lastly, you get uh, some documentation in the box here. You get some stickers, warranty card, quick start guide. So uh, very quickly, j just show you uh, some basics on how to use the camera, and then there's a QR code for some online instructions as well. Um, you know, basic instructions on how to mount stuff. I just basically already showed you some of these things already, and we'll cover some more of this here in a moment. Uh, you get a user guide here, and there is a also a QR code here as well on the back to that same online guide, but it does show you sort of, sort of quickly what the buttons do and everything. I will also show this to you as well in this video. Get a waterproofing uh, information guide here and that explains what you can and can't do with the Go 3 in terms of waterproofing and I explained a little bit that earlier as well as a safety guide. All right so back to the camera and let's go around and just show you everything that's on here. Power button over here on the side as well as a quick menu um, button and I'll show you that here. It's, you can you know, actually access customizations settings and that with that button there. This button here releases the camera from the action pod, USB-C for charging. And then uh, you got your metal clips here on the bottom and the magnets here on the bottom. And of course you have your shutter button here. Now on the camera itself, let's go ahead and pop this out. 
uh, the camera itself is bigger and heavier than the Go 2. So I do want to point this out because it's very important. People assume that it's the same size and everything, and it is not. So you can see here, it is, you know, it doesn't look like it if you don't see them side by side, but it is bigger and heavier. So it weighs 35 and a half grams. Uh, the Go 2 weighed 26 and a half grams. So definitely on the bigger side. So that means that all of your previous Go 2 accessories won't work with the Go 3. Now, for example, I think that this little, this is the original uh, Go 2 pivot stand. I, I did try and you know, perhaps try and use it like this. You could do this as a Go 3, of course, but it won't go into the, you can see it, it, it will kind of hold it, but it doesn't actually go inside. And it's not a very strong fit. This way it's a little bit better if you hold it like this. So you could potentially use this if you wanted to as an, as an additional stand, if you wanted to use your old accessories. But for the most part, um, the and any of the Go-2 go stuff does not work with the Go-3. So you can't put the Go-3 into the Go-2 case. It doesn't work at all. Also, the, you can see the pins are different. So there's like, I think, eight pins on the Go-2 and there's six pins on the um, Go-3, as you can see here. So the pinouts aren't compatible. So if you try to put the Go-2 in here, it won't actually work because the pinouts are different. So that's things that just to keep in mind. Now the lens guard, as you can see here, this is the clear one. They are, it's also removable, and of course that's waterproof, as I mentioned before. Uh, the ones for the Go 2 do seem to fit on the Go 3, but the, like the ones like for Freewell, for example, they do just, they do screw on. Um, they do tell me that that there's no certification in terms of waterproof rating, but I wouldn't use the ND filters anyway on the Go 3 if you're going underwater because that just makes every, that just makes things everything darker and it's already dark anyway underwater. So that's probably not, not that important, but I was able to use the ND filters on the drone footage that you'll see later and um, it, it seemed to work just fine. So if you have the ND filters from Freewell for the Go 2, they do screw on to the Go 3, but there's no term, in terms of certification, whether they're supported or whatever, they're not telling me that it's not officially supported yet. So I believe they're going to come out with some officially supported Go 3 ND filters um, soon, but they're not currently out at the time of the recording of this video. So one of the best new features of the Go 3 is the Action Pod and the ability to use the Action Pod as a remote and also as a screen so you can sort of frame up your video and you can actually take the camera out of the Action Pod put it over here you can go ahead and turn on the camera and it'll power up the camera wirelessly so those extra beeps are from the camera and then you hear the tones from the, the Action Pod and as you can see here we can see what is on the screen there is a slight delay due to the stabilization that's you know baked into the video but basically you can put the camera mounted somewhere and then I believe it's um, you need to be within about I think 15 feet basically it's, it's a within wireless Bluetooth range and you'll be able to start and stop your recordings via the action pod remotely and you can even change your video modes so if you want to take a photo instead go to the photo mode and capture some photos and you can use this as a remote which is a, a really nice feature so another improvement on the Go 3 over the Go 2 is the additional uh, microphone. So there's now two microphones on the Go 3, one over here on top and here in front. There's also a small speaker here. So when you have the camera in the action pod and you want to play back your video files, you can hear the audio from the video that was recorded. It'll come out through the speaker over here. And yeah, so the, the audio is actually there's much better on the Go 3 versus the Go 2, in my opinion, with the additional microphone. Uh, you can use this as a, as I mentioned before, as a vlogging camera. You know, hold the camera out at arm's length, and it captures very clear, um, you know, in terms of voice audio. A little bit of a test of the dynamic range of the sensor. 
So this is the, the sun facing me. So the sun's behind the camera. This should give probably the best image overall. And then if we have this, the sun behind me here, you can see my face is going to be in silhouette. But you can still see a little bit of shadow detail there. I can see that in the preview screen just a tiny bit. Let's get the uh, full silhouette here. I've got the halo effect around my head. And you can sort of judge for yourself how much uh, dynamic range there is in this sensor. That's probably the worst that you're ever going to see. Let's walk over here. Get the sun out of the field of view, but it is behind me. And we got the sun behind the tree over there. And I could tell that there's some pretty good detail there. You can, you can still see details in my face. Uh, you can still see some details in my face and some details there in the background, the building over there, the trees in the background, the sky is an overblown. So yeah, pretty good image overall looks like, at least on this little tiny screen. So the quick menu button here on the side lets you go through the different video modes. And it just cycles through here. So on this uh, pre-release firmware, there are no custom, um, uh, basically custom settings. There'll be some custom settings that will be available that you can um, basically uh, customize to whatever you want. Those additional modes will be available and accessible through this quick menu item on the, on the release firmware when this ac camera actually launches. Another new feature here on the Go 3 is this pre-recording function. So you can go in here in the menu and there's this it explains what the pre-recording function does. It does consume more power and of course the camera, the recommended put the camera in the action pod. So what pre-recording does, it puts this camera into this mode where it is recording stuff and then if you need to capture something after the fact, you press the shutter button and it it actually records the previous uh, you know, in this case 15 seconds, or you can change it to 10 seconds or up to 30 seconds. And so uh, you can hit the start recording here, and it actually is continuously recording, so it uses a lot more battery. And you can see here that it is constantly recording. And then once you're ready to capture what you want to capture, which I think for something this would be good for something like, say, like um, you're waiting for like lightning, for example, and then the lightning occurs, you know, then you can press the record button and then it'll actually save that as a file to the storage and built-in storage. And that's, so, so that's gonna be good for this kind of things where you're not exactly sure when the action is gonna be occurring, um, but then you can put the camera to this pre-recording mode, press once the action has occurred or whatever has happened, then you can press the, the shutter button and then it'll capture the previous, in this case, 15 seconds, but if you want longer, you can say, change it to 30 seconds. And yet another new feature here is the timed capture feature. So you go into the settings, go over here, and then you can hit timed capture. So for example, if you want to uh, do like a time lapse of like a sunrise or sunset and you don't want to be waiting around for that, you can basically set the time for when you want the camera to turn on. You can set your shooting mode here, whatever that is. These are the ones that are available. And this is going to be really good for like things like time lapses and then your, your, your basically your video settings and parameters. You put that all in here. So once you put all these settings in here, let's go ahead and exit out. And it'll say time capture is set. So the reason I think that they uh, made the camera bigger and heavier, which is kind of, you know, one of the things that people liked about this camera is the ultra lightweight and it makes it very versatile and useful in a lot of situations, especially where you can't necessarily put a camera and you know, attract a lot of attention is because of the overheating issues. So that's, um, you know, the question that people are asking, is that fixed? And they're saying, yes, that is now fixed because they've probably added more heat sinks in here to uh, dissipate the heat. So there were a lot of recording time limits in terms of how, how long this could record in terms of uh, recording length or recording clip lengths with the overheating problems. And that's now gone. They're saying that there's no record time limitations with the Go 3. Uh, I didn't do any full testing in terms of how long it will just sit here and record. But in terms of how long the battery will last, it is longer compared to the Go 2. So it's 45 minutes at 1080p, 30 versus 30 minutes previously, um, just on the battery that's inside the Go 3. That's just like 310 milliamp hours, I believe. Um, and if you combine the 
uh, go through with the Action Pod. Uh, the Action Pod has a 1210 milliamp hour battery. So that combined all together, 1080p 30 frames per second video will uh, last 170 minutes. So previously on the GoTo it was 150 minutes. All right, so go ahead and turn this on. And you see we have a nice bright screen here, 2.2 inches. And what is pretty cool is the fact that you can flip this up and you can see here, you can use it in a vlog type setting. I'm recording myself, recording the camera. And the, the orientation of the screen flips over as you flip the camera or flip the screen over. And so basically what they've done here is they've taken the go to uh, obviously improves the camera by making it bigger and heavier to address the uh, the heating overheating issues and they have added this small screen in the back so now we have sort of a traditional action camera of course it's touch screen you can access all your settings here and so for those of you that are familiar with the one uh, r and one rs series um, this menu interface will be very familiar to you i'm not going to cover every little thing here in the menu but basically uh, you can access your settings here. This is pre-release firmware by the way. Um, camera storage, quick capture setting. You can actually change the go three button settings. So basically the button here, uh, you can uh, uh, change what that does. So uh, when the camera is out of the pod here and you press that button, it turns on the camera and starts recording. If you double press it, it will uh, take a photo. Uh, but of course when it's in the pod here, you can just, um, the, it, that's the voice uh, feature that I just demonstrated. When you say take a photo, take a photo. And it'll start, it'll just take a photo there. You can also record video by saying start recording. And it switches the video mode there. And you can stop it by saying stop recording. So that's one of the new features there. I accidentally uh, demonstrated there. The uh, voice features are enabled. So go ahead and I'll show you where that's turned on and off here. I'll go ahead and turn that off so it doesn't accidentally trigger again. And of course you have multiple modes here on the camera by swiping left and right. So you have your photo mode, video mode, you have free frame video mode, which is basically the pro video mode that was on the Go 2. And I'll explain that here in a second. Time lapse. Time shift. We have a new slow motion mode, which is 1080p 120. I don't believe we have that on the Go 2. Loop recording, this is the one I mentioned earlier. Basically, it'll fill up the storage on the camera and then loop back and overwrite the old files so you can continuously record. You have star lapse, interval, HDR photo, and regular photo mode. So uh, I don't particularly like using action cameras for photos, but this definitely does work. So standard photo mode is just uh, basically uh, JPEG photos. You can click on here. You can also capture RAW as well, I believe. You can go into the settings here. Yeah, so you have you have different formats here. I, INSP, INSP plus RAW, which is, um, these are two formats that you can get for photos that you have to import into the studio app, either on the phone or in on your PC. And then there's the pure shot mode, which actually does all the f processing in camera. And I believe it'll produce a JPEG file. And here you can change your timer settings, three seconds, five seconds, etc., and your aspect ratio. So these are the ones that are available, 2.7 to 1, 1, 9 by 16, and 16 by 9. And then the other photo mode is HDR photo. And so what this does here, again, you have INSP and PureShot. What this does is it creates three different exposures, and it will merge the three different exposures into a single shot. So HDR photos are probably best used in situations where you have a lot of um, contrast, where you need more dynamic range. So for example, maybe like inside, um, uh, if you want to capture like something, uh, some detail from inside a building, as well as 
the, the detail that's outside the building through a window. Uh, instead of that being blown out, it will it'll, it'll actually expose for the over bright areas and the dark areas so you basically can capture more detail in the highlights and in the shadows and that's what the HDR photo mode is for. So of course the main mode is going to be your video mode and in the Go 3 we have 2.7K now instead of 1440p as your highest resolution. So yes unfortunately it just does not do 4K yet and you know again it has to do with I think limitations in terms of how much heat you can dissipate in, in the camera and it while they probably could go 4K, I believe you'll then reintroduce those overheating problems at this size. And that's why you kind of need to go something to something a little bit bigger like the Action 3 from DJI, which is I think 56 grams, 57 grams. So another you'll have to add another 20 grams of weight. And even that camera has lots of overheating problems as uh, a lot of you, this is probably a lot of you are well aware. So um, that's why we are limited to 2.7K, so a little bit more resolution at 2.7K. Um, you do have a higher bit rate as well at this resolution. So overall, the image quality is slightly improved. It's not a, a huge improvement, but in my opinion, it is a, uh, an improvement over the Go 2. I think you got a little bit better dynamic range on this sensor, as well as the um, more, more details being captured on the camera because of um, the higher resolution and higher bit rate. So you can adjust your ratio here 9 by 16 or 16 by 9 depending on what you want to capture. Uh, 1440p and then you can go up to 50 frames per second of 1440p and 100 uh, or uh, 1080p is limited to 50 frames per second in the video mode so if you want the 1080p 120 frames per second you have to go to the slow motion video mode and uh, then it'll capture the file in 1080p at 120 frames per second. So yeah, so basically just to get to the main settings, you swipe down. To bring up your uh, video settings, you swipe up. To bring over any files that you've previously recorded, you can swipe to the left, flip from the left. And then if you swipe from the right, you can adjust your camera settings here. So you, you can, uh, you have different uh, color profiles here. The main one and the default one is the vivid color profile. And if you, I think this is going to be sort of um, uh, subjective and a personal preference type of thing. You may like the sort of oversaturated and you know, lots of contrast look that comes from the vivid profile. I personally do not. If you want a little bit less color saturation and a little bit less um, contrast, go with the standard color profile. And then there's, if you want even less than that, go with flat. And on, I don't know, on this camera, flat is not a true flat, in my opinion. It's it's pretty, it's, uh, it is, it does look like it has a lot less contrast and saturation, uh, but it doesn't look as flat as you would see, like say from like a DSLR or anything like that. Um, but you can add back a little bit of contrast saturation if you want in post-production, if that's what you prefer. Um, but yeah, the, for me, I prefer either flat or standard. So most of the clips that you can see in this video are going to be th those two profiles. Now they do have other profiles here. They have um, Biking 1. There's Biking 2. Urban 1. Urban 2. You have Snow 1. And snow two, night one, night two, ocean one, ocean two. And so they have different profiles here that have different looks. And I'm not gonna go over every single one of them. Basically, some have a little bit more saturation, a little more contrast. Um, they just have different looks. So you can go and try each one of those and see, especially if the night ones might be look, might be better for like dark, low light situations. Um, but in my opinion, I would stick to either standard or flat. I think that gives you the most flexibility, especially if you do a lot of your own post-processing. But if you want a straight out of camera look, just press the button, record, and then upload to you know, your social media, then yeah, probably going with Vivid is going to be best for most situations for most people. So you can, of course, go to your manual settings here and you can check your color profile. You can set your shutter speed here 
into pretty much whatever he wants. I think it goes to, from 1 30th to a max of uh, 1 over 8,000. You can go to a, an auto shutter speed in manual mode, which is nice. Um, let's see, can you do that with ISO as well? So ISO can go from auto. You can also set an ISO max. So 400, 800, 1600, 3200 max, which is pretty nice. So this, uh, you know, will basically allow the, so if you set it to, uh, for example, ISO 400 max, it'll, allow, it'll drift from 100 to 400, and it'll adjust your shutter and ISO accordingly in manual mode. So it's sort of, sort of semi, semi-automatic, semi-manual. So I like that flexibility, that's pretty nice. And then you can also fix your white balance here, depending upon whatever your situation you're in. But I typically use that as uh, auto, but if you really want your, you want your white balance switching around in while you're filming, then you want to definitely fix that. And then you can adjust your EV setting here. Uh, if you're looking for overall brighter image or, or darker image, you can do that here as well. But Typically, I would stick to auto for most situations and, um, you know, just press the button and, and, uh, you, and get your video that way. So over here on the lower right is your field of view settings. So you have ultra, action, linear, and narrow. So uh, narrow will be removed in the um, released firmware. This is pre-released firmware, so they won't have that. So I'm not going to cover that here, but uh, it didn't look very good anyway. Linear is going to be, I think, if you're looking for uh, mostly sort of straight lines in your footage, then linear is the way to go. It's going to obviously crop off a little more of your field of view. Action I would use for um, point of view footage. So if you're going to use this on a hat cam or on your chest with a pendant, where you're using like sort of hands-free point of view footage, I would go with the action field of view and then pretty much for anything else like vlog type footage, selfies, that kind of stuff. Ultra is probably going to be what you want to go with. It's going to give you the most field of view, but it also gives you the most distortion on the edges of the video. So in the standard video mode, uh, you're going to have different levels of stabilization here. There's level one, and you go to level two, so that, you know, basically if you're going to be doing more running, more intense activities, you can increase the stabilization. We're going to level two, and then there's level three for even more extreme. Or you can choose to go with no stabilization. Stabilization is off here. But typically, uh, one you know, level one is going to be good for most situations. But with the standard video mode, the stabilization is baked into the video. You have no control over what happens, uh, and the um, the aspect ratio is fixed either 16 by 9 or 9 by 16. So if you want a little bit more control over your stabilization, uh, you want to switch over to the free frame video mode. And here, it records the entire sensor. It's like 2888 by 2888, but it's like a square image. And you'll get the, you can take that file and then import that into either the studio app on the phone or on uh, the uh, computer. And there you can, um, you choose the stabilizations you're looking for, uh, either the flow stabilization, which is similar to what's uh, done in camera, but it will do that in post processing, or you can choose FPV stabilization, which is again um, going to be good for FPV drone flights. It's going to give you that nice FPV look, and you can also uh, do the 360 horizon lock mode um, on the app in the studio app with this free frame video mode, where basically you can. Uh, no matter what orientation the camera is in or how it's rotating around, the horizon remains completely level throughout the entire video. So you can rotate the camera, it doesn't matter. It will maintain a uh, completely level horizon throughout the entire video. So if you happen to not like the stabilization that Insta360 does in the uh, studio app with the free frame video mode, you can use Gyroflow. And for those of you guys that do drone flights, I think you'll probably like that a little bit better. The FPV stabilization is good in the studio app, but there, in some motions, it seems like it's, uh, it's a little bit abrupt. Uh, so if you're looking for more smoothness or if you want to adjust the amount of smoothness, you can use the Gyroflow app. Uh, it, happens to, or it happens to be that the, the lens profile and everything for the Go3 is already in the camera or already in the app. So... Um, all you have to do is drop the file into the app and everything's auto-detected. You don't have to do any auto-syncing or anything. 
and um, basically just uh, trim your file, uh, adjust your stabilization settings. I did have to adjust my, my field of view settings to 0.75 uh, so that you don't get those uh, weird uh, crop marks on the side and uh, export it and you get some really nice uh, footage here. So I, you know, I'll, I'll put full links to the different um, stabilization types in the video description, it'll be basically uh, launched over on my second channel. So if you want to see the full flights, full uh, clips of those, you can click on those links. And I'll take you over to the uh, full videos and you can compare for yourself which one you think looks better. Now, I personally think the gyrofill looks smoother, more, um, it looks more natural. Now the lens correction, I think, is a little bit much. I just left it as default on the sample that I did. So you may want to adjust that down um, to, to whatever your your, your, your preference is. Uh, but yeah, you, you have a little more flexibility in Gyroflow and the stabilization works really well and, and just everything seems to be built into the application already. I didn't have to adjust any settings or do any kind of work. It just basically you import it and export it and it just works and the stabilization is really nice. So. Uh, I believe uh, Insta360 uh, was working with the developers, obviously, uh, to get that in there and uh, you know, good on them because uh, that's a good app to use for drone flights and you can use also for other things as well. Um, but you have a lot more flexibility in how you want your stabilization to look in the Gyroflow app. So launching with the Go3 will be a new studio app on your smartphone uh, for Android and Apple. And there's a new um, auto editing AI feature in this new studio app. Basically, you can record a bunch of clips on your Go 3, you know, throughout your day or whatever activity you're doing. You can select those clips, import them into the studio app, and then hit the auto edit button, and then it will analyze all of the clips and create a, a basically a fully edited video for you. You can sync that to some music that you can select. And then, uh, of course, if you don't like um, the actual edit that it produces, you can go in and clip and edit each individual clip, adjust the music, adjust different things, etc. In this all in the app and then export it out from the app. And, and in my case, I exported um, higher resolution, highest bit rate. And I actually used this in my last uh, scooter review at the beginning. It created uh, the, all those little clips there were created completely in the um, studio app. And I made some minor adjustments to the clips. Um, didn't take me very long at all and popped out a nice little intro for that review video. So another you know, sort of time-saving feature for this camera is uh, you know, Insta360 is very well known for their sort of uh, app features that are really unique and very useful. And in this case, this is something I'm going to probably use quite a bit. Uh, just make my job a little bit easier in terms of producing little, little sort, of, sort of quick little intro pieces at the beginning of reviews. All right, so I think it's going to cover for this video. I will have uh, some more coverage of this camera, of course, in some future videos. But yeah, let me know if there's anything that I specifically missed that you wanted to see. I will probably do some sort of side-by-side -side comparison, uh, maybe to like the uh, Hero 11. Let me know uh, what, what level of interest there is for something like that down in the comments section. Um, in terms of what you want to see in terms of future coverage of this camera but i think i covered most of the basics of this camera in this video so if i missed anything let me know in the comments below that'll do it for this video talk to you guys in the next one